Hello everyone and welcome to another Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination video. So today we're going to be looking at pumice stone. We're really working our way through the alphabet now. Won't be long before we get onto the new Distress series which I've been planning for ages and I'm so excited to start sharing with you. But for now let's blend pumice stone into some white cardstock and take a look at what it's really like when it's blended. We can compare it to other colours in the range as well and I'm going to give you two brand new colour combinations using it. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these sort of Distress Ink and Oxide videos. Um, but also everything I'm using is linked down below for you. So you'll find the links for the blending mats, the brushes, the labels that I offer you for free to download for free and the colour charts. They're all linked there for you to go and find on my website. So pumice stone, first of all, it is a beautiful grey, but it's a very warm grey. Now, I always think this is one of the ones that is really nothing like the label or certainly nothing like the ink pad, the label not too far off. Now, bear in mind, my label is a little bit dirty. It's for some reason it's had something, some brown ink from somewhere else spill onto it. But you can see there what pumice stone really looks like. It actually blends really nicely with the background on my desk. So with the label, it's not too far off. It's definitely a little bit lighter and I would say a little um, little warmer, a little more of a yellow tone to it than the label suggests and definitely more so than the ink pad itself. Now, I've actually got a new colour chart to show you today that I've just uploaded to my blog on my website, which you'll find again linked down below in the description. So we've got the usual colour chart that I've been showing you for a long time. You can fill in, print off at home for free, Fill it in with all the colours that you have so far and then you can see what you're missing and what you have and you can compare them. So uh, there's this one, let's just have a look. We've got pumice stone here as you can see. We'll do a quick comparison. The only other greys that we've got that are anywhere near. Lost Shadow is not too far off. Definitely a cooler grey um, but similar in that it's a really, really pale grey. And then Hickory Smoke really very dark compared to the pumice stone so definitely not comparable that one but I think lost shadow is not too far off but then I've got another chart for you to find on my blog and that's just kind of a repeat of this but it's all filled in for you obviously colors may vary uh, between printers and printers so um, where you print this off it might be ever so slightly different to how your ink would actually blend onto cardstock at home but as a rough guide for you so you can see what sort of colours you've got, what, what's looking warm and cool, what matches, all these sorts of things. Definitely this is a really nice colour chart to have on your wall in your craft room and we've got pumice stone just down here. So they're available for you but let's do some combinations with this. Now the first one I wanted to go for was a neutral combination. So that's going to be antique linen and vintage photo. So if you want something that is maybe for a vintage card, if you wanted something maybe um, maybe sympathy, um, for example, and you just didn't want to go with the bright colours, you wanted to go with something quite neutral and plain, these would work really nicely for an ombre background. Now I'm just going to pick up a little more pumice stone because that has soaked into my cardstock and dried as I was talking. So just kind of re-wetting, just applying a little more of the ink and pigment on there. There is a video that I will link at the end that actually talks through the difference between um, Distress Inks and Distress Oxides. Well worth a watch because it really does help you understand how they would blend as well and how they work on different materials. Um, so really helpful. So keep an eye out at the end for that and I'll drop you a link so you can click straight through to it. But that is the antique linen going into pumice stone, which I just think is really beautiful. Do you know what? Even new baby, perhaps, if you don't know the gender, so you don't want to go with particular colours, that is going to be perfect. And then I'm going to go into vintage photos. So this is going to be a bit darker, but of course the antique linen is already leading into the darker browns anyway. So I think vintage photo is one of my favourite browns. I think it's the warmth of it. I think the fact that it can work into reds and oranges as well. Let's just take antique linen and let's just blend along that line. No extra ink there, just working with what's already on the paper and on the brush. 
there we go beautiful so allow that to dry and that will dry nice and cloudy and if you don't know what I mean where I'm just holding this up you can probably see the sheen on this, particularly on this area of the uh, vintage photo there and that's because that's still damp the ink the dye ink hasn't yet soaked into the paper it's still sitting on top there the ink um, or the dye rather se selection of the inks kind of soaks into the paper the pigment stays on top once that process has happened and it's all dried that's when you get that lovely frosted cloudy kind of soft look to the oxides so we'll come back to that at the end and see how that finishes up let's do another combination quickly now again I'm going to be using pumice stone of course but then I'm going to go into tattered rose and then I'm going to go into bundled sage so all very lovely soft colours again I think pumice stone doesn't work with um, harsh colours or not harsh colours but bold colours I think if you use anything too bright too strong against it it's just going to drown it out so there's a nice layer of pumice stone oh to be fair almost halfway up my cardstock I probably didn't need as much as that but it's such a light color it's nice and easy to blend out if we need now this is something that I keep forgetting my tattered rose brush needs a wash I'm going to leave this in the video because I think it's important for you to see that um, these things happen I was talking to another crafter recently and we don't know why this happens so if Mr Holtz would like to fill us in but sometimes our blending brushes they get a little bit sort of stiff they get a little bit like the ink has dried on them which you'd expect but they don't stay fluffy and then that means that they just don't blend nicely so for this if I've not got time to go and wash it I just grab myself a new blending brush I do wonder sometimes whether maybe it's something to do with mixing with inks. Perhaps I've accidentally used that brush with a Distress ink rather than an oxide. But it should be okay though because oxides are basically sim a similar makeup to the inks just with additional pigment added. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see if we can get an answer on that. And if I can, I'll let you know in a future video. Okay, so... There is my pumice stone into tattered rose, absolutely beautiful. And lastly, let's just give this another wipe. There we go, into bundled sage. So turn that over. Bundled sage again is a lovely soft green really beautiful now bundled sage does have its own video as does antique linen that we used earlier as well so they are before pumice stone in the alphabet so they do have their own videos on youtube they are all in a playlist so you'll find the distress oxide playlist available for you to go and check out any videos we've done so far and all the others will all be uploaded there eventually we're working through the alphabet and we should have 71 videos up there very, very soon. I think we're on about 43, 42, 43, something like that. So we are getting through them. There we go. We've just blended that into the bundled sage. So let's just take a look at both of these together now and see that one that softened up a little bit. So they're the colours that we've used and these are those strips so absolutely gorgeous I think the grey shouldn't be overlooked definitely pumice stone being one of them uh, it is an essential for your stash a little bit harder maybe to match colours with uh, this is taking a little bit longer to dry than usual but again you can see the dark the green there you can see the wet patches on these so that's where that ink hasn't yet dry soaked in and dried uh, but that will soon all work now as promised I've got the video here for you so you can check that out that is explaining the difference between the inks and the oxide so go and check that out and if you're interested as well the playlist up here for you to go and find the other colors that we've done so far and lastly please don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you